All right. Good morning. Uh, I hope you guys had a great uh, yesterday. What was, what was yesterday? <laughs> Altitude sickness. My name is Brian Sambolin. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm actually from Scottsdale. And uh, I'm here to talk about Trellis, which is a, the product of conference-driven development. Basically, every conference I go, I write a little bit of it, and I release a new version. In Trellis, <laughs> it's a component-driven web development uh, framework. Uh, it's all Ruby. Uh, right now, it runs on Ruby 187, because that's what was running on my Mac when I started doing this. Uh, 186 doesn't work, uh, just because of how I deal with blocks. In uh, 19, it's still broken in some areas, so I'm fixing that pretty soon. So components on the web. Uh, there's three things that I actually was looking for when I wanted to build a framework that was radically different from Rails. And don't get me wrong, I love Rails. I, I make basically a living with Rails. But in the Java world, yeah, that's, that, that's right. I, I, I was a Java developer. I am still a Java developer in disguise. And uh, if they give me enough money for it, I still do it, you know. <laughs> I'm that dirty. <laughs> so one of the things that I wanted is re reusable components. And it's one of those things that when I'm doing a Rails application, dealing with partials and the ex exponential explosion of partials just drives me crazy. Everything looks great. Fat models, you know, skinny controllers, and then this disgrace <laughs> of a view layer. And it always takes me a, a great deal of refactoring to actually clean the, uh, the views. So I wanted a way to basically encapsulate view logic and uh, also encapsulate some of the logic that ma manipulates that view logic. And that is the definition of a component. I also wanted to be able to build components out of components and you know, do that the kind of a, you know, recursive type of development. I wanted events and event handlers. I didn't want to call anything directly. I want things to say, hey, this is what I publish. This is the kind of things that come out of me. And whoever wants to listen to them, uh, go ahead and subscribe to them. Transparent state management. I hate dealing with HTTP. Uh, dealing with HTTP in the Java world, it's always been one of those things that was always at the, in your face, basically, with the Java server API. And then uh, I discovered Rack on, uh, on Ruby. And Rack basically makes dealing with HTTP so simple that for me to create an abstraction on top of that, it became cake. So what is Trellis? It's uh, magic like Rails. So there's a lot of DSLs. And I kind of went DSL crazy with this because I was getting into writing DSLs, and I was writing DSLs for pretty much ev any Java library. I wrote a DSL on JRuby for it, uh, just because I could. In, in uh, metaprogramming, it's kind of like a drug, you know? You get the first hit, and then you're hooked, and from that point on, I was like, okay, I don't need a DSL for this. Stop now. <laughs> it is a micro framework, or at least it started as a micro framework. Uh, in 300 lines of code, I did about 60% of what a, a, a Java framework written by a good friend of mine that uh, did, called Tapestry. And that was kind of one of my main inspirations for this. But the moment I saw that 300 lines of Ruby code could do what you know, thousands of lines of Java code did, I was like, that's it. I just can't go back now. Um, unless you give me enough money. We already talked about that. So it's small like camping in Sinatra. Uh, it's very Sinatra-like when you look at the code. And actually, one of my plans is to get rid of all the plumbing that is unnecessary and write on top of Sinatra pretty soon. Because those guys, I mean, they have a pretty large development team now. And uh, it, it's, you know, I might as well uh, concentrate on the component features of the framework and not on the underlying plumbing. So just like any Rack application is designed for small mounts uh, in, uh, that sounds wrong, in small apps. <laughs> Components, so of course, that's the main goal of the whole thing. It's they're supposed to be easy to be built. Uh, they got to encapsulate the complexity of the application. So when there's something too complex, you move it to a component. Uh, components could be core components from the framework or custom components for your application. And it's NVC all the way. NVC at the application level, NVC at the component level. So here's a quick uh, overview of what, how things work. Uh, you have an application, which is a Trellis application, just like a Sinatra application. Uh, that has a bunch of pages. Uh, the pages have components in them. The components are declared uh, on the template of the page, or if they're invisible components, uh, in the uh, actual page code. Uh, the components emit events, uh, the components consume events, the pages consume events, and also dispatches uh, events to the components. Uh, the inspiration, uh, pretty much tapestry and web objects were the two big ones to begin with. Then when it came time to implement, I started looking at Seaside. Of course, continuations in Ruby still suck, so I couldn't do continuations. 
So I had to basically do HTTP uh, magic behind the scenes with state management to basically deal with things like that. You know, how to, how to freeze the, the state of a, a component, put it in the session, or put a token in the session, uh, store the component in the database, or in mem memcache, or whatever rack could actually uh, give me to do session management, and, uh, and then bring it back. Uh, there's, uh, of course, Sinatra. The moment I saw Sinatra, I'm like, wow, I gotta do something like that. Uh, camping, just because of the size and how easy it was to just get started. And of course, there's some, some lesser known frameworks like Iowa and Wii, which have some really cool features, but again, it's, they're, they're not that uh, well known. And of course, the, uh, the big 800-pound uh, you know, gorilla, Rails, which all the, the magic of Rails, you know, just the first time you saw Active Record, if you came from the Java world, you're like, oh my god, I've been doing Hibernate for all these years. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> I actually teach a Hibernate class, which at the end of the class now I have a slide where I say, well, all those three days of Hibernate you can replace with this one slide of Active Record. <laughs> and they hate me for that. So of course, it's, it's built on Rack. I was gonna do some nice Rack jokes, but I'm gonna move on. And let's look at some code. So hello world. Everybody needs to see a hello world of any framework. The uh, hello world in, in uh, Trellis uh, can have a, a simple uh, RB file in this case, it's called simplest, in one HTML template. And this is what I have in there. So I have um, the RB class, and you can see that it has an application, it has a start page, and it has a command at the bottom, basically, to launch the application standalone. You can deploy them to uh, anything that Rack supports. So I deploy them to Heroku. Um, you, you can use anything that supports Rack up to launch an application, you can use to launch the application. This template, it's just an HTML template. Very simple. You can see that there's components in there. Um, the components are those tags that start with trellis. And here's a, a bigger view of the same application, but all in one file. So I also have inline templates. Uh, and I, I kind of like that when I'm doing developer-oriented web applications. But I don't want to be doing you know, anything with an HTML editor. I know what I want. I know the structural semantic markup. I throw it in there, and I worry about the CSS and all that stuff later. So in here, I have a Markaby template. And it's a little small, the, the font, but there's a embedded components. In here, I have a component called value that returns the value of a property of the page or, a, a, or an instance variable. And I have a page link, which generates a, a, an href to basically go to a specific page. So up there, I have the application. It has one entry point, the home page. I have one page class that has an instance variable for the current time. So you guys pretty much can figure out what I'm doing with this very simple demo. And I have one page template embedded in the page class. And uh, there's two components that I use right now. So one is the value and the page link. And I can get access to that current time uh, instance variable from within my value component. Uh, and there's many ways to get to things. You can get to the instance variables raw, just like you do in ERB and do loops in the, in the templates if you want and all that stuff. But I kind of prefer not to do a lot of you know, scripting in the views. And that's one of the reasons to have components, to basically hide all that nastiness from, from, from the views. So let me show you this. Uh, to run them, they're just Ruby scripts. So you can just, there, there's a start method there on that last command that I put in the, in the file. And you can just run them. So let me go ahead and... Uh, show you that application. <coughs> oh, and I broke it. Yay! All right, let me move on to the next one. <laughs> it always happens, it's beautiful. Huh? So how do you navigate from page to page? To navigate from page to page, uh, you basically, when you handle an event, the return value of that event becomes the value of the page you're going to. Each page has to know in advance which pages it can navigate to. So you have to declare them in your page. You can say page home goes to page X and, and Y. And then from the event handler methods, you can say return, you know, you can return an X or a Y instance that's already available to that page, and that will create the navigation link. And of course, this doesn't make much sense without a uh, example. So here's an example. Uh, this is the high low application, a very simple uh, game where you're guessing, basically, the num number guessing game. And I'm going to have a page. It's called a start page, a guess page, and a game over page. And um, most Trellis applications are like this. They're the, the little state machines where the nodes are just uh, pages. 
and the transitions happen via uh, event handling. So I have uh, three XHTML pages, and I have the Hilo RB uh, uh, code. The application has the home page, and you, you can optionally define the pages you're going to navigate to. So I'm here, I'm saying that I have the guest page and the game over page as pages available to my application. You can have multiple applications and reuse the pages across different apps. Uh, the uh, start page has an on select. That on select, every, it, my, the convention that I put in there is that everything that starts with on, it's an event handler. So there's going to be a select event created by a component on the page, and the on select is going to answer that call. Uh, I put the return, I know it's you know, just to make it more clear in terms of explaining what's going on. So I'm going to set a value on the guest uh, page, which is the target of the number to be guest, and then I'm going to navigate to the guest page. Very simple. Um, on the start page, I have that start guessing uh, link. That's what it's going to generate the select event that that on select it's uh, responding to. The uh, default routing URL uh, a scheme, it's like this. You have a page uh, dot event underscore the source, so where, where it came from. Uh, then you have optional values, and then of course, as many query parameters as you know, uh, a URL can handle. Then inside of that, um, when I go to the guest page, I'm actually running a loop component. So it's another trellis built-in component that basically loops uh, over any set of values. And of course, a loop is something very simple to pull off with just Ruby code. So you could do that too. Uh, this, the loop component is one of the first components that I wrote to see how to handle basically uh, HTML tags producing Ruby code under the scenes. And it creates that link of numbers. When you click on one of those numbers, look at the, the URL looks like uh, guest.select underscore link. So it's coming from the link component, it, the uh, event it's select, it's coming from the guest page, and it's passing the value one. And of course, you have different values for all the 10 digits that you have in there. Uh, then you can make a guess. You can see that the loop generates all the, the guest links, and you're gonna end up with something like this. And uh, let me go ahead and launch this guy. So there's the high-low. Uh, oh, browser's on the wrong side of the moon. And if I click on start guessing, you can see that there's the typical number guessing game. And I can really, can't really see what I'm doing here because uh, it's too low. Seven. <laughs> Sad things to be proud of, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So basically, here's a state machine with, with the notes replaced with the actual pages. So you can see really what's going on. But again, it's a very simple, you know, if you have something that you have a very well-defined uh, flow, it, this is a really easy way to basically get that flow ahead of time and, and then flesh out the notes. In, in a Rails application, we kind of go more with the, the controller, and, and a controller has multiple views, and that sometimes get, can get out of hand in terms of understanding what the application is doing. Of course, this only scales to a certain size. So that's why I like small applications that are like little, little state machines to be built with this. Uh, I, I wouldn't go and build a, a CMS uh, using this, which I did though. <laughs> um, but I, I proved my own point that it's like I started basically getting confused about you know, how the, the flow of events happen. Um, not as fast as you would in a Rails application because you know, I mean if you have a very large Rails app, you have to really start basically whiteboarding what goes where. And uh, in this case, um, uh, this is actually pretty helpful for that type of application. I have a, also a Hangman application. I'll show you that one running. I'm going to skip the code just so you guys can see what goes on. Uh, similar state machine type of app. And uh, instead of having numbers, I have letters. And I suck at this game. And since I can only see part of the, uh, the uh, screen, <laughs> but you can see that you, know, you, you have a list of words. Uh, this is about probably 100 lines of Ruby code. Uh, you know, very simple. And I'll show you the Ruby code for that. So here's the uh, Hangman application. And it has a uh, main application. Notice that I have static resources. And, and Rack basically gives me all the magic to basically have static resources, have, uh, you know, read, like, for example, things like uh, a JavaScript file and cache it. There's all kinds of Rack middleware. So uh, yesterday, you learned a little bit about Rack. And the, uh, the number of middlewares available 
enables you to build a web framework like this. I mean, I built the first version of it on, on, on one conference. <laughs> um, so it is, it is really amazing a framework to build things like this. Uh, here's the start page where I basically create the list of uh, words from a text file. Uh, then I have an unselect to start the game. I set the target word. On the guest page, I have some persistent fields now because that you have to remember the guesses that the, the user has made. So I have, this is where the, the state management comes into play. A page can have persistent fields. A component can, ha can have persistent fields. You can also tell the page, hey, this persistent field is going to go to the session. Uh, this one is going to go to cookies. This one is going to go to the database. This one is going to go to memcache. So you can have that, you know, decide what to put where. So in, in most cases, you will put something simple like a token, uh, a, a, a uh, encrypted token on, on a cookie, and uh, use that to find the chunk of information that might be in memcache or in the database. Uh, other than that, this is just some uh, traditional Ruby code. Notice in here that I basically uh, I have an array of underscores uh, to show basically the things that haven't been uh, the letters that have not been picked from the word. And um, the game over page, of course, just has the target, which is the, the the target word that we were guessing. So I can print it there and say, "Hey, you failed to guess this word," or "Yay, you found the word X." And the number of guesses that they had left. So I can tell them, "Hey, you 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 found the word and you only had two guesses left." All right, uh, let's talk about templates. Uh, templates, I can do uh, uh, XHTML templates or HTML templates or HTML5 templates. And I have a remove component, which is something nice that came from Tapestry for, for uh, a designer. So they can have a preview of the page uh, statically, and that gets removed at runtime. So it's a very simple component, but I, I, I thought it was a really cool feature that, that uh, Howard created in that framework. Uh, Haml, so if you like Haml and SAS, you can use that in line or in templates. Uh, and let's talk about components, though, which is the, 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 the main feature of Trellis that, that uh, should, should basically drive you towards using components. Uh, there's also components in Rails. Uh, there's the cells uh, for state, uh, stateless components project, and there's also Apotomo, which is for stateful components. So if you like the concept of basically reusing view logic in, in some controller logic, uh, instead of copying and pasting or doing some weird you know, hierarchy of controllers, uh, you can use something like a sales or Apotomo. And I, uh, you know, I don't know why I'm selling the competition here. But <laughs> so here's that loop component that I show you. And this is basically you know, 10, 20, the 10, 15 lines of, of uh, Ruby code. And you can see in here that basically it's just looping over some values that are available to the context of the page. Um, so I use uh, something called Radius to basically do all the templating and all the tags. Um, so that tag, that render do tag, it's something that comes out of that radius uh, gem. Um, and other than that, basically, it just each uh, one of these components contributes a little bit of markup to the page. So that's a stateless component. Here's another one, a custom one. In this case, I created a component that basically goes to Flickr, uh, uses the uh, interestingness API, and, and grabs a bunch of random pictures, uh, which it, when I show you the demo, something inappropriate might show up. I apologize in advance, or not. <laughs> And you can see when I put one of these components in there, I can tell it I want uh, two pictures from the API, or I want three pictures from the API. And let me show you that uh, code. So there's the Flickr RB uh, project. And in here, I have my custom component. It's the uh, Flickr interestingness. It's a Trellis component. Uh, this is basically just the rendering of the tag. And in here, of course, I'm not caching anything. I mean, I'm doing this brute force. I'm hitting the, uh, the, uh, the service. Uh, which is an XML RPC service using the uh, XML RPC client. And uh, I'm calling that, that, uh, that method, the Flickr interestingness get list. Then I'm using Nokogiri to parse all that stuff. And then I create, uh, I do some XPath to basically grab what I need, the, the uh, URLs for the pictures. And then I dump those uh, using Builder onto the, the markup of the component. So inside of the application, now I have a one embedded template in here, and I can now use my components like this. So I have there one component, and then I, I can have another component some other place with uh, some parameters. So this is the be beauty of this. You can have, you know, every time that you see a pattern in your views that repeats with some, you know, changes in, in, in you know, cardinality or something like that, a component might be an appropriate uh, abstraction for that. So let me go ahead and... Um, launch this guy. I believe I have the mobile hyperlink there. 
And oh, let me go and make sure that it's running. you hate when you lose your window. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly Okay, now it's running on 3006. Let's go back to the browser. Local host 3006. And of course, assuming that the web, it's working for me, I should be able to now see um, the component. And you can see the, the moment I refresh the page, of course, it's going to go in and make that call again. Now, I could, I could do some magic behind the scenes. I can say, hey, um, cache some of these uh, URLs in the background the component itself could cache them as a class level type of caching. So the component could say, oh, start caching some of these URLs, and then I can do randomizing from those URLs that I cache rather than do the call again. So, and you have, you have those choices. That's, that's some of the things that I built into the framework. So that is a uh, stateless component, custom stateless components. But really, a stateful component, it's where you're going to get your money's worth. And uh, here's an example of a counter component. And uh, I know that somebody's talking about Seaside pretty soon, and I stole this demo from Seaside. Everybody that's doing a, a component-oriented framework steals something from Seaside. In this case, this is my, uh, <laughs> my, my contribution to the, uh, to the bounty. So I have a component called a counter, and that counter has a state. It's just a count. Uh, in a page, I'm going to put a bunch of those, uh, name counter 1, counter 2, and counter 3. And when I... Uh, call the events on that component, the page will intercept the event and then pass it to the component instance. And of course, refresh the page. Right, right now, of course, I'm doing everything uh, on a page refresh. I'm, I'm doing uh, non-AJAX non, non events. I also have AJAX events uh, that can do some pretty cool stuff. And I started with UE, and I kind of got disappointed with the framework, so I'm rewriting everything with jQuery now. So it's kind of in a it's state of flux. Uh, and I also have each component has a reset method that basically sets the count back to zero. And I have a reset event handler on the page that then will call the instances of reset on all the components. So I have two ways to communicate. I have uh, the uh, indirect event-based communication. So when an event happens on the component, the page grabs it and then gives it to the right component instance. And then I have a reset link that has an event handler on the page itself that actually then manipulates the component instances directly. So for each component that I place on the page, I have an instance variable available to the page. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, and it's better if I just show you the actual code running first. And I believe I have this one running. Let's see. OK. So here's my, uh, my component. And you can see that I can increment. I have three instances of them. I can increment them all. Uh, they all they're all keeping state. For this particular demo, I'm keeping the state in, in a cookie. Uh, but that's just my choice for this demo. And this is a page event. So when I click on that reset counters, I'm resetting all the counters uh, by manipulating the instances directly. So let me show you the code now. And I think we can uh, then go into uh, questions. So I have. Uh, Stateful counters, it's the uh, code for that. And here is the code for the component. It's called counter. It's that stateful component. I was playing with my DSL-ish language in here. I think this is a goofy way to do it. Uh, I was doing an X as stateful type of approach. But I think I'm just going to have a component that's a stateful one and just inherit from that. You know, um, I, I went too, too crazy with the syntactic sugar right here. Uh, there's a tag name for that. So there's going to be a counter tag that you put on the page. I have a field call value, which is persistent. And again, you can see here that I'm playing with my DSL still. Everything is still in flux in terms of the final you know, 
uh, lingo for the, for the framework. Uh, on initialize, I call a reset method to set the value back to zero. And here's where I'm actually rendering the component. And I'm rendering uh, uh, an href for adding and su subtracting. And then I, again, I, I'm using builder to basically put an h1 with the value and uh, two uh, hrefs for uh, adding and subtracting. That's it. I have an on add. So this component generates events that the component itself responds to. So when I click one of those links, it's going to generate an on add uh, event, an add event that on add is going to respond to and increment the internal value. So this is, you know, true OO construct encapsulation. The page doesn't really have access to that value. Well, you know, in Ruby we have access to anything, but <laughs> I'm not exposing that value directly to the page. There's an on sub subtract and there's a reset. On the counters application, I have in my page three instances. On, uh, when they click on reset, here's when I'm manipulating the components directly. I'm calling reset on all three of them. Of course, I could loop and do some nicer stuff in here. And I'm returning the page itself. So when you return self in a Trellis application, you're basically saying refresh the page or navigate back to this page. There's, of course, redirects, routing, all, all that funky stuff uh, in there. But that's it. That's, that's basically the, the application. The, uh, in the uh, template, all I have is three tags for the components. So very simple. Uh, but you can see the power of this. This is where, where the, the real power of this lies, the stateful components, being able to have state localized uh, to a view and a little bit of a controller all wrapped together that you can reuse in other places. You can put parameters in there to change the behavior slightly uh, and avoid having you know, an explosion of basically controller snippets or if then elses or case statements in a controller, which you know, I've seen uh, my, my fair share of them. Uh, you can do pretty complex things. I wrote a grid component that basically takes a model object, uh, in this case just a data mapper uh, model object, and it basically does all the you know, table sorting, uh, editing, all those things. So you can create components that are CRUD components, uh, then you can place them on pages, you can put those pages in, in a gem and basically have CRUD applications out of the box with just uh, pages and components. Uh, routing. Uh, I have basically routes just like in, in Sinatra. I basically stole most of the Sinatra code for routing, but then I actually started experimenting with new things. So the routing, if you know Sinatra routing, you can do the routing in Trellis the same way. Uh, for example, I have a day, day of the year, year, month, and day, uh, same type of uh, uh, route substitution of parameters. Uh, I also did something cool that I think actually, I'm, I'm not a genius, but I thought it was pretty clever. Rather than having to, to put your routes in the right order, I sort them by reachability. So I automatically sort all the routes by reachability, and uh, that way you don't have to basically, you know, like in, in, in Rails, we have to have our routes in, in routes RB in order. You don't have to do that with Trellis. Trellis will basically uh, figure out that, you know, the catch-all route should be the last thing to, to try, because I, I, add, I, I evaluate them, I give them a weight. And uh, those with the, with the uh, highest weight goes first, and the ones with the lowest weight go last. So of course the catch-all has the, the lowest value possible. And that's, of course, that's just an RSpec test for that. Uh, I also have filters. I have uh, before, around, and after filters. And this is when I broke uh, 186 and 19 because I used the 187 uh, you know, block parameters style, so I have to rewrite this to basically you know, work in 19. And you know, this being a small project, I actually I think I have two people using it uh, somewhere in Japan that send me emails. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> so now I own it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I, and my goal is not for, for people to adopt this massively. If, if it works for you for something small, great. But the idea of components, I think, is something that uh, now there's a, there's a big uh, momentum behind pushing those into Rails in a, in a clean way, uh, probably as a plug-in. Uh, Apotomo, I think, is doing a great job for that. So again, take a look at that. Uh, so I can do filters to do, for example, things like authorization and, and, uh, and the like. For testing, I use rack tests. So basically, I TDD all my, my Trails applica uh, Trails applications, and I can uh, basically use RSpec in uh, rack test. So basically, very very traditional, you know, Ruby uh, development TDD. And uh, what's next? Uh, of course, uh, sessions. Uh, I'm actually working on some more session magic, which I, I think that's where the value of the framework comes into place. I'm gonna do some CRUD pages so I can do the 10 minute you know, or the five minute blog demo and that type of stuff and wow some newbies. Uh, Ajax, again, I, I ripped out all the Yahoo stuff because I was pretty dissatisfied with it. So I'm actually going to jQuery, which is actually, I'm, I, I've, I'm falling in love back with JavaScript because of jQuery. Actually, I hated JavaScript before. It's not falling in love back again. It's like a bad dating service. Uh, persistence, I use for some of my demos, I use Data Mapper. Um, it just works pretty well. 
In a deployment, it's rack, so I deploy my apps to Heroku, uh, you know, one push there, all you have to do is a rack up uh, file. And uh, is it ready? No, it's version 011, but I've just gotten started. So it, it's, uh, and again, the more conferences I go, the better it gets. <laughs> uh, there's some links in there, and I already give, give, uh, uh, gave uh, the, the uh, PDF for the presentation, so you guys should have it pretty soon. Uh, there's a website where I basically blog about all the things I'm discovering. So this is very experimental. Uh, you know, you will see one blog post where I say, hey, this is the really cool thing, the coolest thing that I've ever seen. And then in the next blog post, I'm saying, like, that was a stupid decision. I ripped it out of the framework. So don't depend on this for anything production uh, level right now. Uh, they asked me to pitch SonyConf in Arizona, uh, which is, again, another Ruby conference uh, in the desert. Uh, not as a beautiful of a setting as here. And of course, uh, <laughs> we're going to have Joe watching you. So, But if you're with me, you don't need your papers. So we should be good. <laughs> and uh, that's my company. We do Ruby, Rails, uh, and actually Groovy and Grails, too. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Yes? So I think you may have answered this just in the course of the presentation, but what about trying to build this on top of something like Act Action View? Or Active View? That's what Apotomo has done. And they've done a, a great job at that. And actually, I'm, I'm, copying a lot, I'm copying a lot of the things that I'm seeing them doing. But there's some things in there that they haven't seen because they haven't worked with a component framework. They, they, they didn't come from .NET or from Java uh, to see you know, components fail miserably and sometimes succeed pretty well. I saw, for example, JSF, and, and I was like, oh my god, what a monstrosity. And then I saw Tapestry, and I'm like, wow, even makes Java palatable. So it, it, you have to be, uh, have gone through those successes and failures with components to know how they work well. And of course, back in the day, I, I used to do Delphi and all the you know, Windows base, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, drag and drop type of things. And of course, I saw all the horrible things that happened with those two. You guys remember somebody putting a button, double clicking on the button, and putting a whole COBOL program on the event handler. So I don't want that to happen with this. So I'm trying to basically steer uh, the, the framework to basically create small applications with very simple uh, handlers with you know, three or four lines of code at most and, and take a lot of the complexity into the components. Yes? Uh, I played with it for about a week and a half. Uh, then I, I tried to get really familiar with Ruby continuations, then to realize that it was going to be a worthless effort for me to go the continuation route. So then I figured, well, I'm going to have to do something with the HTTP session to deal with that type of approach. Uh, so I wrote a lot of plumbing code that basically deals with trying to fake continuations uh, in, uh, in, in a traditional way. Yeah, it's small talk. Yeah. So you're familiar with small talk and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, somebody's talking about small talk uh, in Seaside pretty soon. In small talk, I mean, it's a wonderful language. It just, uh, you know, it just didn't get enough, enough momentum uh, at that point in time. And, you know, it's in history of computer uh, science languages. It, it just, you just have to be at the right time. You know, like things like Java succeeded, it, despite of the language. Of course, the Java VM is a wonderful uh, piece of machinery. But the language, now we all know, I mean, I, I, I went from C to C++ to Java, and I thought, like, are we going backwards, or what's going on in here, you know? <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> well, the, 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 uh, how to build, I, I built, I used to actually have my own library of Delphi components back in the day. Uh, so I used to you know, write hundreds of components, fairly complex things. So I have that knowledge uh, behind the scenes of basically how to build components that work well, uh, how not to do, you know, how to let people customize the components, but not too much, <laughs> and, uh, and basically avoid people basically creating components for everything. Not everything has to be a component. You can do things the traditional way and only use components for the stuff that requires state and require to be reusable and slightly parameterizable. And our next release is going to be on top of Sinatra. So if uh, Sinatra runs on Rails, so then <laughs> Trellis will run on Sinatra. <laughs> Well, run on rails, so I'm piggybacking backing on the uh, on the successful ones. <laughs> All right, excellent. Thank you.